personal note, I, I know you were on vacation last week. I am so sorry all oh, that you and your you. family have had to go through. Um, hang in there. We've all had some of this. It's not it's really dangerous and uh, hang in there. I just I feel bad for your wife, your family, your kids. Thank you. And I'm well, really the good sorry news is there are more good people in this country than bad. And we've heard from a lot of them. And we're grateful for 100 percent. So thank you, Sean. Yeah. Thank you. All right, my friend. Good show, Tucker. Welcome thank to Hannity. All right. Buckle up tonight. The sanctity of your vote in this country is at risk as Americans. When we head to the polls on Election Day, we expect our votes to be safeguarded, to be tracked counted by diligent, honest officials in accordance with the law. That did not happen in Southern Florida. Since election night, nearly 100,000 uncounted votes have just magically turned up in Liberal, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. We have no idea where the votes came from, where they've been, why they weren't counted last Tuesday. So many laws, and we will outline this tonight, have been broken. Our inalienable rights have been spit on and now breaking just moments ago. Our sources confirming tonight to Hannity. They are telling us a criminal investigation is, in fact, now underway. And coming up, we're going to show you why this crisis in Florida should deeply concern all Americans, not just Floridians. And tonight, we have warned you for months. The destructive Democratic agenda that they were hiding will wreak chaos across the country. Now they're finally telling us endless investigations, subpoenas, a quest for impeachment, not a single plan to improve the lives of the American people. So is now the top order of business in the Democratic controlled House of Representatives just destroy Trump? The Pelosi destroy Trump House. Now we're going to show you how Pelosi, Waters, Schiff, Nadler and company are hitting the ground running. It's everything they purposely did not tell you before the midterms that they have been planning all along. All right, sit tight, buckle up. A lot to cover tonight. It'll take the full hour. We start with our breaking news opening monologue. All right, less than a month ago, a massive Category 4 hurricane made landfall on the Gulf Coast of Florida in the Panhandle. 35 counties were under a state of emergency. 155 mile per hour winds wreaking havoc throughout the Panhandle. The destruction, as you can see, as we saw, was horrific. Entire blocks were literally wiped away. The area sustained billions upon billions of dollars in damage. But on November the 6th, Floridians in the panhandle, they went to the polls and their votes were counted, every single one of them, on time in accordance with Florida law and Florida's constitution. Sadly, the same cannot be said in southern Florida. In Palm Beach, Broward counties, we are witnessing a colossal disaster. Laws have been broken. Florida's constitution ignored. None of this was caused by a hurricane, but rather by local officials who are incompetent, corrupt, and obviously feel they are above the law that 65 other Florida counties, 65 of 67, adhered to. In Palm Beach County, at least 15,000 new ballots were unearthed and counted after election night. And in Broward County, almost 75,000 so-called uncounted votes magically turning up day after day after day after the election. Tens of thousands of lost ballots just seemingly appeared out of thin air. The vast majority, of course, cast by Democrats. Now, this should not, let me be straightforward, this should not be Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal. This is, this shouldn't be about politics. This is much deeper. Whatever your political affiliation, what we're witnessing is a horrific miscarriage of America's most fundamental rights and a serious potential now criminal violation. The law is clear, it is unambiguous. Florida law, let's put it on the screen, quote says, the canvassing board shall report all early voting, all tabulated vote by mail results to the Department of State within 30 minutes after the polls close. The law continues, quote, the canvassing board shall report with the exception of provisional ballot results, updated precinct election results to the department at least every 45 minutes until results are completely reported. 65 of Florida's 67 counties, they complied with the law, including every county in the panhandle that was absolutely ravaged by Hurricane Michael 27 days prior to the election. Broward, Palm Beach counties totally ignored the law. 
broke the law. For days, Broward County officials continued to tally literally tens of thousands of votes in violation of state law. It appears yet again, we have one system of justice and ele for and elections for Democrats and another for the rest of us. Now, the supervisor of elections in Broward County, a woman by the name of Brenda Stipes, would not even tell state officials where these mysterious votes were coming from, where the votes had been, how many votes were left to be counted. Again, a violation of law. There was no updating of votes every 45 minutes. Again, violating the law. And this morning, multiple boxes full of sample and provisional ballots left behind in some rental car were actually discovered by an Avis employee at Fort Lauderdale Airport. This is insanity. You know, we send election observers to other countries. We need them here. And on Friday, Florida Congressman Matt Gates literally blocked from observing a location where ballots were being loaded into a truck. Take a look for yourself. Okay. Why can't we watch what's going on, man? We were told you can't be here, so you have to... Who told you that we can't watch what's going in and out of the truck? My supervisor. You you see my Who's your super? Yeah, I would love to see him. Okay. But until then, let's go. All right, all right. Well, you tell me why, why we can't know what's going in and out of that truck. And who? what's the name of your supervisor? We'll, we'll get all that take care of. Do you, know his, do you know his or her name? The supervisor's name? name yeah, we'll, 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 what's their name? We'll bring them out to you in a second. Do you know their name? Yes. We'll bring them out what is it? Will you tell it to me? We'll bring them out to you in a second. What's on the truck? What we're seeing in, in South Florida is a national disgrace, and it's far worse than that. Broward Palm Beach County has violated any chance of there ever being any real integrity in the vote in Florida. We will never have any chance of knowing what the accurate vote tallies were from this past election now in the state of Florida. That has been ruined. That's off the table. And tonight, all we really know for certain is that the, quote, newly counted ballots have drastically tightened the election and subsequently triggering statewide recounts, all because of what is gross incompetence, corruption at the Broward County Supervisor of Elections Board and Brenda Snipes. Now, she has a history of this. Late last week, we had a judge ruling that Brenda Snipes actually violated state election law. Now, what is even more outrageous is that this is not new for Ms. Snipes. Now, her track record is literally atrocious. Why she was even in this position is beyond any understanding. How she's been allowed to continue in this powerful position, beyond comprehension. Last week, we learned that Snipes, quote, accidentally mixed in rejected provisional ballots with several hundred valid votes. That means the entire vote count has been irreversibly corrupted. And just this past August, a judge ruled that Snipes systematically had mishandled mail-in absentee ballots. In 2017, a judge also ruled she illegally destroyed ballots following a primary race. And in 2016, some Broward County election results were posted online, get this, before the polls had even closed. And in 2012, 1,000 uncounted absentee ballots, well, they were mysteriously discovered in Broward County a week after that election. And in 2004, Snipes simply lost track of 6,000 absentee ballots. Now, this is the woman that could determine the outcome of these important races for the Senate and the governor's race in Florida. Now, many Floridians are rightfully calling for consequences. Former Governor Jeb Bush tweeting out, there is no question that Broward County Supervisor of Elections Brenda Snipes failed to comply with Florida law on multiple counts, undermining Floridians' confidence in our electoral process. Supervisor Snipes should be removed from her office following the recounts. Um, maybe now. I don't think we should wait. Senator Marco Rubio, very vocal also about Snipes and her incompetence and corruption, tweeting, quote, every vote legally cast and received within time frame required by law should be counted. The issue in Florida has been repeated violations of election law by the incompetence and the lack of transparency of Palm Beach elections, Broward County elections. And now Snipes could, in fact, tonight 
be facing criminal charges. Sources have confirmed to us on multiple levels tonight a criminal investigation into election misconduct in South Florida is now ongoing. Just a short time ago, Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi released a letter from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement stating that they will work with the Attorney General Bondi on any criminal investigation and subsequent prosecution of Brenda Snipes or anyone else who may have broken laws and committed voter fraud. Now, of course, the damage has been done. Florida governor turned Senate elect, Senator elect Rick Scott is now sounding the alarm. You don't just magically find 93,000 votes laying around unless you need smoke for cover. That's why this is so problematic. Take a look. Bill Nelson is clearly a sore loser. He can't stand the fact that he's not going to be elected for, what, the first time in decades. And he won't. He's, he's just here to steal this election. That's what he's done. His lawyer came down here and said, I'm here to win the election. I'm not here to get a, get a free and fair election, make sure votes are, ca are counted. No, he wants to win the election. That's his only purpose. Now, make no mistake, when the dust settles here, Rick Scott and Ron DeSantis will take their rightful place as senator and governor of Florida. But tonight, Democratic operatives, they are trying to prevent all of that from happening. On Friday, lawyers for the Gillum and Nelson campaigns, they actually objected to a judge, to non-citizens' votes being rightfully denied. In other words, they want votes from non-citizens to now count. Where is their integrity in all of this tonight? That means they only care about power, nothing else. Rule of law means nothing to them. And it gets even worse. Nelson just hired an attorney. His name is Mark Elias. His name may sound familiar to you. He's the left wing hack at the very center of Hillary Clinton's attempt to rig the 2016 election with that phony dossier. Remember Clinton, the DNC paid millions to Elias and his firm Perkins Coie. Yeah, that firm. To dig up the Russian dirt, hire Fusion GPS, hiring a foreign national, Christopher Steele, an ex-foreign spy, subsequently put together a, a dirty dossier full of Russian lies that not even Christopher Steele stood by. That campaign opposition research, remember, it was distributed across all of Obama's DOJ by Steele as credible, nonpartisan information, the contents leaked to the press before the 2016 election. Remember, David Korn's article, October 31st, 2016, only days before the election, he reported that, quote, a veteran spy has given the FBI information alleging a Russian operative to cultivate Donald Trump. And let's not forget about Michael Lizikoff's Yahoo report, September 2016, alleging Russian collusion. Democrats were trying to rig the election with the help of Hillary's bought and paid for foreign nationals using Russian lies. Remember, none of it was ever confirmed. Most of it's been debunked. And as you can see, Elias, he's a very experienced Democratic operative. And of course, he's also been involved in past recounts. His quotes will shock you. In 2013, he said, those who have seen past recounts in Virginia know that they tend to uh, do not tend to change the results. By the way, there was only 167 vote advantage for the guy he's representing. The next year, he said, quote, recounts really only happen where you are talking about dozens or a few hundred votes separating candidates. Gee, Mark, I wonder why the change of heart. Gun for hire, say anything, just, you know, make the rules up as you go along. Now, of course, the Democrats, they pretty much wrote the book on election rigging during the 2016 election. I seem like the only one that's pointed this out. We all know the Democratic primary. We know it was fixed for Hillary Clinton. Remember former interim DNC chair Donna Brazile admitting this on my radio show. Remember, she had actually used the word rigged. She kind of tried to back off it in this interview, but she admits she used it. Take a listen. What I said in the book was that in exchange for bailing out the party, which was broke, the Clinton campaign would get control over certain decisions and aspects of the DNC that made it difficult, if not impossible, for me to do my job. It was unethical, but it was not rigged, and I stand by that. But you said you actually used the word rigged. Of course, because I promised Bernie that I would go department by department and do a forensic uh, uh, test to find out what happened. She used the word rigged herself. Then she tells the story how Bernie was robbed by the DNC machine that Clinton was 
controlling the cancer, as she called it, hangs up the phone after having to tell Bernie Sanders the truth, said she cried out of anger over this. So we have one system of justice and elections for Democrats, just like we have one system of justice for the Clintons and another one for anyone who opposes them. This is not equal justice under the law or equal application of our laws. Now, tonight, we're going to bring you updates all throughout the hour from Florida as they become available. But a criminal investigation, let me repeat, is ongoing as we speak. Now, whatever happens in Florida, here's one thing. I know the Democrats are all excited because they got control of the House of Representatives. By the way, the president, in retrospect, now that he went out and fought for all those Senate candidates and Republicans picked up those seats and that in the Senate, by the way, turned the blue wave into a little baby blue trickle. Because now Democrats are doing exactly what I told you they would do. They're now coming clean. The things they weren't saying on the campaign trail about what their real plan is to wage what is a never ending full scale investigation into anything and everything Donald Trump to destroy this president. And according to new reports, Pelosi and company get this. They are planning to launch a subpoena cannon at the Trump White House firing on all cylinders with a political hit list of nearly 100 targets, meaning 100 investigations, tax returns, Stormy Jan Daniels, James Comey, the impeachment of Justice Kavanaugh, Shifty Schiff wants to actually investigate the president's treatment of CNN, the Washington Post, Amazon. Democrats are stopping at nothing to pursue the unhinged campaign to halt President Trump. And his progress, by the way, that means our progress. That means America's progress. And of course, this is a plan of endless investigations. By the way, very few facts. Nancy Pelosi is actually saying Democrats don't need an indictment to move forward on their impeachment fantasies, while she and other Democrats fuel even more baseless hysteria about Mueller's Russia probe. House Democrats, they have been working overdrive to now smear the acting attorney general, Matt Whitaker, which was the president's lawful choice, period. And don't forget, Rod Rosenstein, who's been running this whole thing, is conflicted in multiple ways, like signing the last FISA, writing the letter recommending that Comey get fired. But he's still been running it. They didn't care about his conflicts. Take a look. I want to make this very clear. Uh, if he doesn't recuse himself, if he has any involvement whatsoever in this Russia probe, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to find out whether he made commitments to the president about the probe, whether he is serving as a back channel to the president or his lawyers about the probe, whether he's doing anything to interfere with the probe. Mr. Whitaker needs to understand that he will be called to answer and any role that he plays will be exposed to the public. Uh, we, we don't want there to be any ambiguity about that. You don't have confidence in him as America's no, top I enforcement don't. officer. Oh, no, I don't. And I don't test, take it from me. There's bipartisan and uh, editorializing about this that that he should never have been appointed and that uh, it, that it, it, it does violence to the Constitution and the vision of our founders to appoint such a person in such a manner uh, to be the chief legal officer in our country and that's bipartisan I'll go further the, the his appointment is simply part of an attack on the investigation by Robert Mueller, the special counsel. It's part of a pattern of interference by the president, a part of a pattern of obstruction of that, uh, attempt of obstruction of that investigation. The only problem is no one's talking about meddling with the Mueller probe. Nobody. The president has said twice in the last week, no. So ask yourself, the House Democrats, is there a single agenda item that they are advocating that will make your life better. Any one agenda item that's going to create more jobs, make this country safer, build a brighter future for our kids and our grandkids. Well, we know the answer tonight is no. It's all part of what I've been telling you. They've been hiding what their agenda is really all about. It slip out occasionally. And then they tell everybody stop, which is mobilizing their political hit list. Get revenge. They didn't like the results of the 2016 election. By the way, they didn't like the results of this last election. They want to shield their own deep state corruption and put this country's future at risk. What they ought to be focused on is our kids and our grandkids and law and order and equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws. And yes, yeah, something called our Constitution. Yeah, the document from which all laws originate from our founding Constitution. 
All right, we have a lot to get to tonight. We'll also talk about Georgia. We'll also talk more about this agenda of the Democrats as it's revealed. We're going to start with the legal side of all this. We'll talk to Greg Jarrett, Andy McCarthy on what has happened down in Florida. That and so much more as we continue this busy breaking news edition of Hannity. They haven't followed the law. Uh, we know Brenda uh, Snipes in mixed um, illegal ballots with legal ballots. We know they've not let party officials in. The courts have said follow the law. So what I'm trying to do is get them to do what we what we expect. The laws are set up there to prevent fraud. And for whatever reason, they don't want to do it. That was Florida Governor Rick Scott earlier tonight reacting to the latest developments in the Florida recount here with reaction to get the legal side of all of this. No, author of the number one New York Times bestseller, The Russian Hoax, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton, frame Donald Trump, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett and Fox News contributor Andy McCarthy. Let, let's start with we have civil violations of law and now we have the criminal investigation that has now begun with law enforcement, the attorney general, Pam Bondi tonight. Uh, what are we possibly looking at legally, Greg? Well, unfortunately, Florida law has no teeth. Most of the violations already committed uh, by Brenda Snipes, who is the epitome of incompetence and recklessness, are civil violations. So the only penalty is a fine which she doesn't even pay. It comes out of her office. It's true that there are felony statutes of fraud. There are about 20 of them in Florida. So far, three agencies in Florida say we have no evidence of fraud, but, Sean, their investigation is in a premature stage and only cursory so far. So it's good that the Attorney General Pam Bondi is vowing an intensive examination. Snipes had the audacity to stand in front of cameras, I think it was today, and say, until now, nobody ever accused her of doing anything wrong, which is a lie. Every election she's been presiding over since 2002 has been marred in controversy. The question is, is she capable of correcting? corruption. Her track record suggests she is. Yeah. Let me go to Andy. Look, it's not even a question. Laws, laws were broken. We saw what the judge said on Friday night about the Florida Constitution, about laws in this particular case. But uh, without rehashing what I've said in my opening monologue about Brenda Snipes' history, I have to wonder why she was there. But more importantly, what do you see on the legal side? Well, Sean, I, th I think, you know, you hit on the right question at, at, at right now at, at the start. Why is she there? Uh, she really should not have been there uh, presiding over this particular election, given what her track record is. And, you know, look, it, we have a situation where uh, in Governor Scott's case, somebody had a 50,000 lead on election night. It's down to 12,500. There could be good explanations for that. There could be corrupt explanations for that. And the problem is that the public has a right to know what is the explanation for it and the way that they've conducted themselves. It makes it very difficult to give credit to this in terms of a, a election system that has integrity. I, I think, as you said at the end of your monologue, at the end of this, what we end up with is Senator Scott and Governor DeSantis, because I think their leads are too big uh, to be overcome even by rampant corruption and fraud if do, there is do we, some. Do we know if we uh, have all the votes? The, the, or the bad thing? Yeah. Do we, do we, uh, are they still throwing in tens of thousands behind our back as we speak? You know, if I, oh, I just happened to find well, another 20,000. Well, Sean, Sean, right, well, but this is the thing. If you're behind, your motive, your incentive is to try to foment as much chaos as you can and prevent there from being like a, a ceiling of, of where we know what the votes are and they don't go any higher. And obviously, if you're in front, as, uh, as Scott and DeSantis are, what you want is some certainty. You want to say, you know, look, however the votes come out, they come out, but we at least need to know how many there are. Well, we, we're never going to get, I could say with certainty tonight, number one, laws were violated. That's a fact. That's indisputable. Then we have the incident of Snipes mixing rejected provisional right. ballots with legitimate provisional ballots, Greg, we will never get an accurate count for Florida. It has already been tainted on many levels. 65 of the 67 other counties, including the panhandle, if this happened in the panhandle, I might understand it. 
But if 65 counties continue to get it right in Florida and 2012 and 2014 and 15, 16 and 17, the same players, right. the same nonsense, the same games. It is not fair to the rest of Florida what it's goes not. on here. And it tells you, Sean, that something is amiss here when 65 counties can get it right. But just about every election, these two counties, Broward and Palm Beach, can't. She missed Brenda Snipes every deadline that was set and everybody else met them. She commingled valid with invalid ballots and then, astonishingly, tens of thousands of ballots suddenly and magically materialize out of nowhere with no proper accounting, no chain of custody. We have no idea when these ballots were cast and by whom. And so, you know, th this has got uh, the nefarious look of corruption written all over it. I'm not saying that fraud was perpetrated, but it does need to be investigated, given her track record. All right, let, let's look at two specific issues, Andy, as we move forward. So we have two different recounts, really, that are going on. There are two different thresholds. One will be different in the governor's race because the, the threshold is higher and as much as the vote disparity is greater. That will be a machine recount. Right. Then you've got, they're going to look at, oh, I guess, all of these provisional ballots. And there you have, we already have the attorneys for both uh, Mayor Gillum and soon to be ex-Senator Nelson wanting to count the votes of illegal immigrants. They stood up and they, they literally advocated that those votes be counted. What are we supposed to do in that case? Well, Sean, this is where they're philosophically at, though. They've been, you know, we have two different things going on here. We have the potential procedural irregularity that applies to this particular election. And then you have the overarching Democrat approach to government, which is to eviscerate the distinction between citizens and non-citizens and we shouldn't be we shouldn't think for a moment that if you can wrap your brain around the procedural irregularities that their overarching agenda goes away it doesn't so of course they're going to take the position that none of the votes of people who might not properly be voting should not be counted because in their minds those people are just as legitimate to count as Americans voting are to count, and that's why that's a big reason why our our electoral system is in the mess that it's in. Um, you know, the fact that people whine so over these over people who shouldn't be voting, having their votes counted when we have uh, uh, that means Americans who vote get their votes discounted. It, it, that's well, just as big a problem. Uh, and Greg, I, I mean, this is 18 years after 2000. Dimpled, pimpled perforated, not perfect. Let me ask you this. Mark Elias, who you know so well right. from this whole Perkins Coie issue, in, he had a Virginia client ahead by 165 votes, 0.007%. Criticized Republicans for not conceding, saying uh, the recounts don't tend to change the results. 165 vote difference. He had another client just up by 12,000 votes and said recounts should only be done where there are dozens or a few hundred votes separating the candidates. Um, doesn't exactly sound like a man of deep no. abiding principles that cares about fairness and equality and justice <laughs> under the law as it relates to elections. People should be suspicious when Hillary Clinton's lawyer who paid for Russian information is involved in any election recount. And that's Mark Elias. All right, guys, thank you both for your analysis. The legal side of this is going to be very important as we move forward. And when we come back, we have more stunning Example, stunning incompetence. And by and for former DOJ official, election lawyer at the Public Interest Legal Foundation, Jay Christian Adams. Jay, you have been there. You've been following this. Let's go back to what you're seeing on the ground, what people need to know. How bad is this? And do you agree with Andy McCarthy's assessment that uh, he doesn't believe it will ultimately impact the final results, which is that Rick Scott will be the next senator and DeSantis will be the next governor? Uh, Andy is right. Recounts usually confirm the existing tally. But, Sean, what you're seeing is astonishing incompetence. We sued Brenda Snipes 
for incompetence in maintaining the voter rolls. And I got to know her very well. I got to know her employees. She was my witness on the stand at a federal court trial where she admitted non-citizens are on the voter rolls in Broward. They're voting. She doesn't turn them in when she finds out about them. She admitted there's felons illegally voting. She doesn't call the police when she finds out about them. There are people on her voter rolls who were born, they have birth dates when Grover Cleveland was president in Broward County. So I got to see close up how incredibly incompetent both Brenda Snipes is, as well as her entire staff. So this is not just her, it's the whole office. Well, and, and we see that, Tammy, because it keeps happening year in and year out. This is nothing new. And I go back to the simple point, and then based on what Jay Christian Adams is saying here, why is she there? But more importantly, the rest of Florida is hurt by this. And now they're being hurt dramatically by this. And their vote ultimately is is in jeopardy really in the end well right that every false vote every um, uh, illegitimate vote that's counted erases the vote of an american citizen uh, and that of course it makes a mockery of the entire system but i i would take one issue with one word of of our friend uh, jay christian uh, about incompetence this is intent uh, and I think that it's very important. And, and Republicans and conservatives tend to expect the best of people. Uh, but the fact is, the left, uh, it, you can't presume that they mean well. They do not. And this is a matter of, you know, the, the ends justify, it justifies the means. Uh, and it's about, it's not even about winning. Winning, of course, implies that you followed the rules and you've, conv and you've persuaded people. This is about stealing power. And that's what we're seeing unfold here. And I have to say, you know, the the problem with the FBI and the DOJ, everything we've seen there with that corruption and the degree that they went to to try to invalidate an American presidential election, uh, I have to uh, suggest, I think it's pretty obvious, that kind of a problem didn't just exist as a, an isolated issue within the federal government. I think it's throughout the system that now presumes it's completely in charge and that these elections are charades and that they're meant to give the impression to the American people uh, that their vote counts, whereas in fact you saw Hillary's reaction of the shock that something didn't happen in a predetermined way. So I think we have to take this very seriously and recognize. And, and look, you asked Rick Scott uh, a night or two ago, uh, uh, or maybe at the end of last week, uh, how, why is she still there? Because, you know, he's been the governor uh, and he really didn't answer you. And that's what concerns me as well. The system allowing a woman like that to continue to operate, because in a way, this kind of uh, chaos uh, maybe suits the establishment in general, not just the Democrats. And by the way, we're watching the recount as it takes place, say, even as we speak. We expect by Wednesday that Ron DeSantis will be declared the winner. I think that it's the 19th, Jay Christian, if I'm not wrong, that, that Rick Scott would be declared the winner in that particular race. But I, I, I want to go back to, to Brenda Snipes and her team and how many hours you spent and what other things you learned about her on top of that which we already know. Look, Sean, the trial went on for two weeks. They, they were losing things. I mean, we, in Discovery, we asked for their manuals and procedures on how they keep the voter rolls clean. They couldn't find any until the third day of trial when they sprung it on us. Uh, and, and it's just astonishing levels of incompetence and, and chaos. I mean, you've never seen anything like it. And of course, then they ascribed race. They said they were being sued because of racial issues. It's the same playbook we see everywhere. But I want to warn you, Palm Beach is going to be a problem. Palm Beach has outdated equipment. They can't do a, a paper ballot manual recount. By the way, paper ballots share a lot of the blame here, too. It, it well, is well, what happens the when they down. talk about overvotes and undervotes and, oh, there's a mark over here, but not over here where you're supposed to do it. They're going to say, well, that, the intent is there for that. And in, in the one case where they went before the judge and they literally both Gillum and Nelson's lawyers have said, no, we want that to count. And that one, it was one vote, but one vote shows the lack of integrity. Look, I think this entire dynamic shows uh, what uh, Governor DeSantis is going to be up against and what he's going to have to do and what Senator um, um, Scott is, uh, is now up against. They've got to clean this up. Florida is too important of a state. The, it affects the entire nation. And for every citizen, Democrat or Republican, the legitimacy of these elections is key. Both of those men have got to step up and take the Donald Trump approach of being street smart and working first for the American people. Well, I want and to see they're going to have the opportunity, I hope. Now that we know a criminal investigation is underway, um, I want to see everybody will now have to testify. 
Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Problem is, you can't. That's not going to be something that gets done very uh, expeditiously. All right, thank you both. When we come back, you, you just are not going to believe what happened over the weekend. What Democrats are planning to do, by the way, uh, to Donald Trump now. We have Steve Scalise, Matt Gates, his experience this weekend in Florida, New York, named Nita, Nita Lowy. Literally sat down with Axios. You got to watch this. Should the majority look into these issues related to President Trump that has come up? The Space Force. Yes. James Comey's firing. Yes. The travel ban. Yes. The family separation policy. Absolutely. Hurricane relief in Puerto Rico. Oh, it was absolutely in inadequate. White House staff use of personal email. Oh, for sure. The president's business dealings abroad. Absolutely. And I want to see his tax return. By the way, we're now like identifying everything they kept quiet, about 100 issues they want to investigate. No plan to make your life better. I can only imagine what else they have in store. Also tonight, that Florida recount is on. Here's what happened to Congressman Matt Gates this weekend. Literally stopped from viewing. He was filming it. Ballots being transported. They stopped the congressman from doing due diligence. Take a look. Why can't we watch what's going on, man? We were told you can't be here, so you got to... Well, who told you that we can't watch what's going in and out of the truck? My supervisor. Who's your right, super? Yeah, I would love to see him. Okay. But until then, let's go. All right, all right. Well, you tell me why, why we can't know what's going in and out of that truck. And who? what's the name of your supervisor? We'll, we'll get all that take care of. Do you, know his, do you know his or her name? The what's supervisor's name? name? Yeah, we'll, 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 what's their name? We'll bring them out to you in a second. Do you know their name? Yes. We'll bring them out what is it? Will you tell it to me? We'll bring them out to you in a second. What's on the truck? All right, joining us now is Congressman Matt Case, along with the author, brand new game, a brand new book. I've read the, this book cover to cover. Back in the game, one gunman, countless heroes, and the fight for my life. Republican House Majority Whip Steve Scalise is with us. Congrats on the book. I know you're still recovering. I know it's been very hard, and we do know how close you came not to surviving that day. And we're so glad you're here. Um, let's let's go to the Florida recount issue first, Matt. You represent the Panhandle. 27 days before this election, entire neighborhoods were wiped out. But on time, following Florida law, they got the job done. But it, as usual, Broward and Palm Beach, you went down on behalf of your constituents, I assume, because their votes shouldn't be, you know, well, counterbalanced by something that's corrupt. Tell us what happened. Well, Sean, you're absolutely right. I'll be damned if the people in South Florida are going to dilute the legal votes of my constituents who have a right to an honest, fair, representative republic. In the video you just showed, there were armed police that were stopping me just from trying to get an accurate record of what was going in and out of the supervisor of elections office in the middle of the night. I don't know if it was furniture. I don't know if it was election equipment, ballots. What I do know is that there is no chain of custody for 80,000 ballots. The those ballots reach five pages long, so you're looking at over 404,000 pages of information it's that outside. I don't know. I'm inside. still waiting to hear from the supervisor. No, and look, I mean, what are we afraid of? We had the Palm Beach supervisor of elections tell the media that if they didn't turn their cameras off, she was going to have them arrested. That's the type of thing you would expect in a oh, communist or, name, or fascist Acosta, dictatorship. they respond differently, and even if they weren't being rude. Oh, um, oh. Yeah. Listen, if I was Jim Acosta, this would be viewed as a human rights violation. But because yeah. I'm a congressman trying to represent my constituents, I was told that I couldn't get an accurate record of what was going on. Me, and now no chain of custody for ballots. Unbelievable. Uh, that means we, we how could you have any faith in it coming out days after the election, violating law after law? Congressman Scalise, you just heard Nita Lowy. Um, we've been hearing from Nadler. We've been hearing from Schiff. We've been hearing from Maxine Waters. We've identified, Axios identified 85 at least a hundred investigations. How do you stop what is obviously the Pelosi destroy Trump at all costs subpoena brigade? Well, Sean, first of all, I think that uh, they go down this road at their own peril. Uh, President Trump has followed through on all the things he's promised he said it would do. It's frankly, it's why the left doesn't like him so much, but it's also why in every place I would go to, every swing district I would go to, uh, you would see thousands of people showing up for Trump rallies. Uh, President Trump would go to a place and there would be not only a packed house, 
of a 15,000 person arena. But there'll be another 15,000 people waiting outside because they love what he's done to get this country and this economy back on track. And you look at the Senate seats that he was able to flip. Uh, re- the Democrat seats that are now Republican Senate seats because yep. of President Trump's uh, leadership. And so well, if they want to have this agenda, Sean, where they just yeah. want to harass the president, I think it's going to backfire on them like what happened with the Kavanaugh hearing. And, and look at what happened in 2010 with Obama, his first midterm. Six Senate seats lost. Six. 63 House seats lost. That was 69 total. Uh, in 1994, uh, eight Senate seats, 50 two House seats. And I think Matt Gates worth saying we're learning tonight. Good thing Donald Trump worked hard and picked up those Senate seats and and we won those races. Yeah, Donald Trump's pretty good at winning states, and that's what the presidential re-election will be all about. President Trump's uh, coalition clearly involves creating massive turnout in areas where he's popular. And, you know, he embraced the challenge of this midterm, unlike any president in modern history. Now we've got to make sure that the strategy of the resistance doesn't metastasize from obstruction in Congress to stealing elections. That's why the work we're doing in Florida is so important. I don't want to give the the Democrats uh... any opening in the future future to go and do that. All right. I want to thank you both. By the way, I, uh, Steve, I did read your book. It's Back in the Game, One Gunman, Countless Heroes, The Fight for My Life, Amazon.com. I hope people get a copy of it. While he was serving this country in Afghanistan, well, this weekend, Dan Crenshaw appeared on Saturday Night Live where he accepted the comedian's apology and had a really important message for all of us. I mean this uh, from the bottom of my heart. It was a poor choice of words. Uh, The man is a war hero and he deserves all the respect in the world. I just wanted to say uh, for people that don't know, uh, the reason you're wearing an eye patch right now is that you lost your eye to an IED in Afghanistan during your third combat tour. And uh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate you saying that. So we good? We're good. Apology accepted. There's a lot of lessons to learn here. Not just that the left and right can still agree on some things, but also this, Americans can forgive one another. Really, really class act. Anyway, this Veterans Day, I do want to take a moment, acknowledge the great, great sacrifices that our military has made every single day. They protect our freedom, our liberty, our constitution, our way of life that we often take for granted. We want to thank every woman, man and woman in uniform, past and present. Thank you. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. Let not your heart be troubled or Ingram. Taking it away. Hannity, great to see you. Um, By the way. Uh Uh-oh. I think you should wear one of those salmon color hoodies that Davidson wore on Saturday Night Live. I mean, what if you just came out one night and you did the whole opening, breaking news monologue. You're breaking like it up on me. You're causing trouble. You know, I don't be cool. la, la, Frost la, la, your la, hair. La, la, la. You're breaking up. I can't hear you. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> you always do that. When I, when I get a talk? good joke, you always do that. You always say you can't. It's like that old commercial. Can't hear you. Water uh, running. Remember that from a the, the long time ago? Hang on. Water's running. Marco yes. Rubio moment. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, good. And by the way, all Marco right. did warn us about all of this. He was the first. Oh, my God. He's um, pretty been scary great. what's happened down there. No, no. Hannity, aren't you having a flashback, though? Remember we were on the air in the 2000 recount and kept going back and forth all night long? I think I was Dimpled, on the air. With, yeah. Pimpled, perforated, you exactly. know, scattered, smothered, and covered. I mean, it just is, oh. The I'm, question is, why haven't they learned anything between from now? 18 <laughs> years ago. No, no, no. It's, it's pathetic. But you had a fantastic show, as always, tonight, right, Andy. Have a great Thanks show. So much. Good to see all you, right. as always. Uh, all right. I'm Laura Ingram, and this is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. There are a flurry of lawsuits in the Florida recount battle. Hannity talked about some of them. And in moments, a live report from outside the Broward County Election Center. We're also going to talk to experts there on the ground. Also, in tonight's Angle, you do not want to miss this one. Michelle Obama's new memoir targets Trump, race, and her own marriage. Well, you'll hear my take on what the book is really all about ahead of the heated debate we're going to have on that topic. And French President Emmanuel Macron is the latest to hit Trump over the embrace of nationalism. An expert tells us why Trump is right and the French are oh so wrong. 
But we start tonight on the ground in Florida, where Republicans Rick Scott and Ron DeSantis still cling to razor thin leads. Here to give us the latest is Fox News correspondent Phil Keating outside the Broward County Elections Board. Phil.